The takeaway message of all this quantum physics stuff is simply this, is that we are energy, we're entangled with the whole field of energy, the whole universe is one interconnected whole, and this is how we are connected to each other. However, during our developmental programming, we get beliefs that are programmed into us by our parents through our culture, and then these beliefs then become uh, the reality that we experience. Historically, we define our populations based on separateness, separate on race, religion, origin of country. It's the separateness that divides the population. An interesting point that evolution is actually the unification of everyone come together in harmony, then we have to recognize the programming of separation is the divisive nature that is preventing us from evolving into the future at this time. One of the main divisions in our world is the division based on religion. And we have all these different religions with different stories about their origin, their source, and how they survive. Uh, and yet with different stories, then all these religions are separate from one another. And of course, over the centuries, conflict has been generated by this separateness. And it's interesting because that's like, oh, the separateness between, let's say, Muslims and Jews, or Jews and Christians, or that. Even in the Christian camp, there's conflict, for example, in Northern Ireland, when Protestants and Catholics are fighting each other and then having to recognize they both recognize the same source, the God of love, then it brings to mind a very important question is, where is the separation being driven? And if we understand that source, we can undo it. And upon undoing it, create the unity that the future demands of us. I'd like to, to show you through an illustration the simplistic nature of what's happening to us. And I'll say, here are three cells. Where did these cells come from? They came from the environment through a process of evolution, all coming from the very same source. Well, this is when programming begins, and look what can happen. You can program one child to be a Christian. You can program an identical twin of that child to be a Muslim or another one of the same children to be a Jewish child. This is separation. Is it separation of who they really are? I say, no, you can't separate that. We all came from the same source. What we have to recognize is it's the programming that places the separation. If we start to really go back to the origins of the conflict between Israeli and Palestinians, well, that could be a thousand years ago. However, today there's a more nuanced relationship in this conflict where there's much more at stake now than in earlier times. I had a very interesting personal experience of this conflict when I was giving a lecture in Tel Aviv. And a very interesting side story to that is the couple I met, Ehab and Ora. Now, Ehab came from a Palestinian family, and Ora came from an Israeli family. And of course, the conflict and angst of generations was built into each of these families. Uh, the wonderful story of Ehab and Ora is almost like out of a, a movie. Uh, they were both in the desert walking for different reasons to different places, and they saw each other from about 12 feet apart. They stopped looked at each other uh, and were hit by uh, the story of the thunderbolt. They both just instantly felt each other uh, and experienced this love that ended up a few days later they were married. They went home to their parents' families and both uh, Ehab and Or were essentially disowned because their families could not accept that their child had married somebody from the other side. This led to an issue when Or was going to have a baby, and the question was, where do we send our son to school? And they recognized, well, they can't send him to the Hebrew school because that emphasizes the conflict between them and the Arabs. Couldn't send him to the Arab school because there was conflict then with the Jews. Uh, and then they couldn't send him, they found out to the Christian school, which actually made conflict with all of them at that point, and they were lost. How am I going to raise our child? They created something called the Garden of Abraham, a, a school for kids from very young age, three or so to six, seven, eight, a school that uh, called the Garden of Abraham because Abraham is the prophet for both the uh, Palestinians and for the Israelis. Kids that come into the school come from both the Palestinian side and the Israeli side, and these kids play together. They know nothing about conflict with one another. 
They grow up learning each other's language. They grow up knowing each other as friends. Well, I'm giving a lecture in Tel Aviv on the nature of programming. And I get to the point where I've taught them now the nature of how uh, epigenetics and how our beliefs are changed into uh, programs that are downloaded into our mind and show them how parents are shaping the future generation. And I get to that point and, and it's very clear and what was unique about this, the audience was mixed. There were Israelis on one side of the audience and we actually bust in from the West Bank, Palestinians that sat on the other side. It was like oil and water. They were separate from each other. Uh, and they're both hearing this talk at the same time. And it comes down, I say, and here's the problem. And then I flash the slide on and I show Israeli kids playing with machine guns as kids and Palestinian kids dressed up as soldiers carrying guns. And I said, this is the problem. You're teaching them to hate each other, even though these kids probably have never met anybody on the other side. But now they have a program. If they ever do meet one of these, they already know there's going to be hatred between them. I said, this is the propagation I'm talking about during that developmental seven-year-old period. I said, this is what is continuing the conflict. For me, it was a most amazing moment in giving a presentation with this large audience because it was almost like the air got sucked out of the building. It was so quiet in there, you could hear a pin drop in this giant auditorium. And it was a moment that I realized people sat there and for a clear second saw, oh my God, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? Well. After my lecture, there was other uh, talks and some music and stuff like that. And we closed the session with a song whose lyrics were translated into Arabic, Hebrew, and English. So at the closing, uh, everyone was singing the song with the same lyrics, but with different languages. So I saw this from where I was sitting. And the next thing I saw is that the entire audience was swaying back and forth with the music, the entire audience. And then when the doors opened up and everyone back, went back into the lobby, they all were out there sharing food and tea. Uh, there was musicians out there, there was dancing. And what I saw was most unbelievable was that this separate oil and water group became one and they were all in community. And for a moment there was a striking awareness of look what we have done this is not what we want. And there was like, this is precisely the scenario that the world needs to see. I don't care what side people are on. This is the scenario. And what was beautiful about it, it was all joined together by music. It was the music, the universal vibration that brought people together into oneness. And just to see the whole audience, each singing with joy, the same lyrics was, Oh my goodness, I wish I could translate this into a video so I could show it to you. So we're on a threshold of an evolutionary upheaval and the most beautiful part about this upheaval is based in the quantum physics. The idea that we're all entangled, we're all one, we're all unity. And when we separate the conflict as a result of programming and change that programming, the future is bright because we can program the harmony rather than what we've been doing for generations as programming divisiveness. It is now time for a new program.